phase three. Phase three, easiest phase of this week's videos on the last of acid base chemistry. Um, the last part of it is called solubility product constant. Now I know what you're all thinking. What do you mean? You mean constant like in K values constant? Yes, yes, exactly that. So far we've had KAs, we've had KBs, we've had KPs, we've had KCs, and we add one more to our list, KSP. Solubility product constant. Now what does this have to do with? Well, let's go back to acid just for a second. We can have a strong acid dissociating 100% hydrochloric arrow does not go back only goes to the right we can have a weak acid I go I don't know let's go with uh, h2co3 carbonic that'll form some hydrogen and some bicarbonate oh, that'd be a negative one and arrow goes both back and forth because it doesn't dissociate 100%. So some of it does, some of it goes back, back and forth. Now, when it comes to salt, salts, yes. A salt, not battery, a salt. <laughs> like sodium chloride. You put that in water, you know what happens dissolves completely. It's extremely soluble. Most salts are soluble. Most salts will dissolve in water with no problema grande. But in this case, we have sodium and chloride breaking down and we get sodium and chlorine. And since it just all completely breaks down and doesn't reform, it just goes arrow to the right. So these are very similar. Strong acid and a very soluble salt both break down in one direction, go to the right, and nothing goes back. However, some salts, are not completely soluble. They're slightly soluble or even insoluble. And if you have a salt that's slightly soluble or insoluble, then you have yourself a situation where the arrow can go both back and forth. And let's say, for example, I've got some silver sulfate. Silver sulfate. Remember what salt is. A salt is any positive and negative ion. That's all it is, a metal and a non-metal. That's a salt, very simple. So here I have a metal and a non-metal positive and negative ion. And in this case, this is not very soluble at all. It's an insoluble salt. So what it's, we end up getting <clears throat> is we get two silvers plus some sulfate. But since it doesn't completely break down, we get some going to the right and then some of this reforming to the left. So a weak acid or weak base is analogous to an insoluble salt. And if we have something that goes back and forth, whether or not it's an acid or a base or a salt, we get a K value associated. Because remember, K values are associated with arrows going back and forth. Okay, direction, both, both direction of the reaction. If we have that, we've got a K value associated with it. So with an insoluble salt, we have a K value, a KSP associated with this reaction. All right, let's dive into now writing some of these reactions with slightly or insoluble salts. And if we look at the next problem of the week, which I believe is problem seven, and we will see, let's see, get that out here. What we got? Problem seven. Oh, yeah, oh no, okay. yeah, problem seven. So um, first one, copper bromide. And it says, write a balanced equation and the solubility product expressions for the solubility equilibrium of the following compounds. So, copper bromide, insoluble salt, therefore, arrows going both directions. We have the copper plus one ion, because we can see that it must be a copper plus one ion because the bromine is a negative one. And we have the bromine negative one ion, and that is my uh, equation for it. Very simple. Um, now, what we're going to do here is says write the solubility product expression. So I want to put my K expression for this reaction. Now we know that K's, okay, go on the left, KSP, and we take our products, okay, the same as we've been doing now for weeks, products over the reactants. So copper over the bromine. And on the bottom, we put the product or do we? Yeah, sure, put the product 
right down there. Remember what goes into these expressions. Things which are dissolved in the water or gases. We don't put liquids and we don't put solids in these expressions because they don't have concentrations. Remember, you can't have a concentration of a solid. You can't have a concentration of a liquid. It doesn't happen. You can have a concentration of something dissolved in water and which could be an ion or a gas. So those go in and anything else, new, new, new. Nine, nine, think German. Now, so that for this does not go in here. So therefore, my KSP is just simply the copper and the bromine ion. And that's it. That's my expression for that first salt. All right, let's try the next one. This one we have, what do we got here for B? Silver chromate. Okay, we got some silver chromate. Silver chromate. Silver chromate's an insoluble salt. And it's gonna break down a little bit. Un poco grande. And we will get two, oh, no, yeah, two, two, mm, two silvers. So two Ag positive plus the chromate ion, two negative. Now we write our equilibrium expression for this. KSP equals, remember only, that this is, these are easy. These are the easiest K expressions you're gonna get, period. Easy, peasy. Because the thing on the left is insoluble, it's a solid. It's a solid doesn't go in. So with KSPs, you only ever, 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 ever put in the products. And you just put those right here. And don't forget, you got a two here. So that goes as your exponent. So silver and the chromate, which are negative. And that's it. That's my KSP expression for the silver chromate. So piece of okay. cake. Yeah, these, these salts, salt K expressions are easy. They're easy peasy lemon. What, what rhymes with that? Sleazy. Yeah, okay, sleazy. I think sleazy was one of the seven dwarfs, wasn't he? Still be grumpy, sneezy. Oh, no, sneezy. It wasn't sleazy, it was sneezy. Okay, back to the wall. C. Now, what do we have here? Silver, silver chloride. So, silver chloride. Chloride, insoluble salt, and then silver plus three chlorines. There we go. Got it. Remember, KSPs only put in the products. So, silver ion and three chlorines. So, that'll be cubed. Right. Remembering our world rules. So far, so good, and that problem is El Completo. El Completo. El Completo is Spanish for the complete. I know my Spanish, I'm fluent. All right, now, let's keep going, let's keep going. Let's now do a little bit of math with these KSP expressions for these salts, number eight. Number eight says calculate the concentration of ions in the following saturated solutions. Um, that means it would be an equilibrium. That's why I said saturated solutions. That means this insoluble salt has reached a point where as much of it's going to dissolve, it's going to dissolve. So it's an equilibrium. That's what that means. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. He wants to know, A, the concentration of the iodine in the silver iodide solution. Silver iodide. Okay, let's write our equation for that. Silver Okay, KSP expression, you remember, just put the products in. So I need the concentration of silver, concentration of iodine, boom, there's my expression. Let's see what we've got to figure out here. Um, calculate the concentration of the iodine, so that's the unknown here, in this, uh, for, for A. If the silver concentration is 9.1 times 10 to the negative 9, so I was given the silver concentration is 
times 10 to the negative ninth. And I was given the KSP value for this. KSP for silver iodide is 8.3 times 10 to the negative 17th. 8.3 times 10 to the negative 17th. Remember, let's go back. KSP values, that's a very small number, negative 17, which means this doesn't want to do this. It means the reactants are favored. Remember that? We talked about that like six weeks ago or something, where this, essentially a small number like this means it doesn't want to break down. So whatever you have on left doesn't want to do this, but it does it a little bit, otherwise you wouldn't have a value here. It's a little bit, a little bit of this will break down. Essentially it's insoluble, but that doesn't mean a couple of particles here and there might not break down. So a little bit of it does. That little value means it doesn't break down much. So I just do the math here. I take this, divide it by that, and I'll get X. So if you do that, take that, divide it by that, get X. See what you get for an answer. It should agree with what's on the paper here, which says 9.1 times 10 to negative 9. Um, that would make sense since, if you think about it, with the chemistry it makes sense because if these are both have one of each one, one silver, one iodine, and if they break down, so this separates into equal parts, so if I know one part, I should know the other, so it makes sense chemistry-wise, but you do the math, check it, you should get an answer of 9.1 times 10 to the negative ninth for the concentration of the iodine. Okay, let's do B. 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 Book Rogers, Book Rogers, but you know, unless you have no idea what I was just doing, but me either, that's okay. Okay, let's try a different color. Blue, I'm so colorful today. Uh, B, the aluminum plus three concentration in an aluminum hydroxide solution. So aluminum hydroxide, not very soluble, no, no, no. Not very soluble at all, but a little bit of it will break down. In fact, Let's see whether or not more of it breaks down. You know, why did I put three in front of that? Because of three here. So we got to make sure we have our ions properly balanced, which is balanced. So nice and balanced. So KSP equals concentration of aluminum, concentration of hydroxide. Um, I was given the concentration of the hydroxide. Okay, I was given that concentration of hydroxide as 2.9 times 10 negative 9th. 2.9. 10 to the negative 9th, but remember, you have three of them. So remember what you do with your concentrations with those coefficients. That's your exponent. So we're going to have to cube that. Cube it. Cube it. Cube it. Cube it. Cube it zirconium. Cube it. Cubic zirconium. Cubic zirconium. Remember, cubic zirconium looks just like a diamond. She'll never know. Get her some cubic zirconium. Huge rock. Don't think, Ooh, look at me. I got the... She'll never know. Okay. So this aluminum here, we're trying to figure out. I need the KSP value. That was given. That was given. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 33. Whoa. Hokey Pete and Joe. That is a really small number. Remember in the last one, we had 10 to the negative 17th, and we said that wasn't very soluble. 10 to the negative 33, so not soluble. Okay, but a little bit of it does break down, otherwise you wouldn't have a value here, so a little bit of it does. All right, do the math. Now this time, just remember you have to cube 2.9 times 10 to the negative ninth. If you don't have a cube function, just multiply it by itself three times, and then get that and divide this into that, and we'll get x. And if you do that, you should come out with 7.4 times 10 to the negative eighth. 7.4 times 10 to the negative 8. Uh, yeah, and that, that will be my concentration of the aluminum in that problem, uh, 8B. Okay. So these solubilities with these salts, these K expressions, are easy peasy. So you see, we save the easiest for last. And you thought it was going to be the hardest for last. Nine, nine, nine. Okay, so let's dive in here and get this problem set finished. Get her done. All right, last question. Which of the following will be more soluble in an acid solution? 
or, or in pure water? Which of the following will be more soluble in acid solution than in pure water? So here we have, uh, let's take the, oh, look at B first, B. We have silver sulfate. This is the one I actually had up here earlier. Okay, so silver sulfate, insoluble salt. Breaks down, forms silver and some sulfate ion. Okay, so that's what it does in water. What would happen if we put it into acid? You take this and you throw it into acid, which is a water solution, so there's water in there, but there's also hydrogens floating around. And it's asking what would happen to its solubility. Would this be more soluble in water or would it be less soluble in water? And why? Um, so we make sure we have to back up our, our reasoning. What's our reason with this? A reason for it. Okay, so let's see. Uh, more soluble, less soluble. Okay, so we put this in acid, and then what you got is um, you got hydrogens floating around. So if you have hydrogens floating around, okay, what does that hydrogen want to do? Well, the hydrogen doesn't deal with this. This is just all together. But the hydrogen is a positive ion, and it certainly will want to find and seek out something which is negative. And that hydrogen is going to be seeking out the sulfate. And it can connect to the sulfate and stick to it. Now, why would it stick to it? Because it would form a weak acid. We would add some H. SO4, we have some bisulfate. And that bisulfate is a weak acid. How do we know? It's not one of the strong acids. <clears throat> Okay, so it's got to be a weak acid. And that means that if we have, remember Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle says if you do something on one side of an equation, the other side freaks out wah, and tries to, to fix it, to correct it, to deal with it. So if you start adding some hydrogens to this sulfate, you're taking some of the sulfate out of the solution. That means this goes, going to try to fix that by pumping out more sulfate because you're pulling sulfate out by connecting it to hydrogen we have to make more of it how do we make more of it break more of this down if you break more of that down it makes it more soluble so this silver sulfate would become more soluble in acid because the acid ion the hydrogen ion from the acid would pull out the sulfate we would react by creating more sulfate by breaking down more of the salt so it becomes more soluble in the Acid. Okay, let's try another one. One more of these here. And you can try the rest at home, kids. You can try the rest at home. Uh, let's see. We just did B. Well, let's let's try C. She's, she's a, she is a, um, a zinc. It has hydroxide in it. So let's try that one and see what happens with that. Zinc hydroxide. Okay. Insoluble salt, a little bit dissolves in water. You get some zinc and two sulfates, or zinc and two uh, hydroxides. And so there we got it. Okay, floating around. Now, what happens if you put this in acid? If you put this in acid, that means more hydrogens again. You know, you kids are relatively intelligent. You see what's going to happen. If you add some hydrogens in here, those hydrogens, once again, will be seeking out the negative and we'll be seeking out some hydroxide. And if we do this, we will end up getting some water formed. And that water form means you pulled hydroxide out of this reaction. This side freaks out. We got to make more of that. So we got to break down more of this, which means this becomes more soluble. In fact, if you go through the same process for both B and uh, D and E, we just did B earlier, D and E, you'll see the same thing happens with those salts. They become more soluble as you pull out one of the ions on the right, and then we have to create more ion to replace it, the Sautier's principle, and we break down more salt, so it becomes more soluble. But A is an exception, though. A, if you put A, that salt, into... Uh, an acid, it won't make any difference. Well, let's take, check out why. That acid or that, that salt is copper iodide. Okay, insoluble salt, you get copper and iodine. So I put that in acid, that means you've got hydrogens floating around. 
Well, it's gonna be the same thing as before. This is gonna go here and pull some of that out of solution, and this is gonna replace it and make us more soluble to the right. No, no, no. I'll show you one more time. No. Do you know why? Do you know why? Matilda. Because the hydrogen is trying to connect with an iodine, and that would make hydroiodic acid, which is one of the strong acids. Very good, Matilda, very good. This would form a strong acid, and a strong acid, by definition, is completely ionized, so it can't go onto that ionine and stick there. The water is like little piranhas going, <laughs> saying, no, 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 no. And so you cannot have that stick to that. And if that happens, this cannot stick to this, we are not gonna be able to pull the iodine out of the solution. That won't happen. We can't pull it out of the solution, which means this, if you put it in, in, in acid, the solubility of the copper iodine, copper iodide doesn't change. So it doesn't change because we can't pull that out. We can't make it more soluble because that just can't pull it out of solution. All right, it makes a strong acid. Strong acids say the ionized, say 100% the ionized. I mean, ionized. <laughs> My words today. So, that is actually, that is the last problem in the set. And that, we'll just check and make sure that we have covered all of the topics for the week. Okay. Common ion solubility, pH solubility, did that, solubility product constant. Um, yeah, we're done. That's it. We're, we're done. That, that, that makes like a gift. And wraps up this week. Stop.